everyone this week's video is a little bit late uh it'll come out on wednesday uh, instead of monday but i promise it will be worth it in this video we're going to talk about uh configuring saml uh, to work with cortex um, saml is one of those things yes it's a four-letter word uh, most people have a love-hate relationship with it uh, mostly mostly hate um, but it does seem to be the way that most people have their their sharewell systems uh, configured for authentication um, it's it's usually it tends to be either that or uh, windows authentication now the way cortex works uh, windows authentication doesn't uh, exactly work um, the same way that it that it would with with sharewell uh, for reasons that we can get into in in additional videos um, but if you're doing windows authentication you're probably doing it because you're running active active directory active directory has adfs adfs supports saml it's not that much of a leap to go from windows authentication to saml uh, more than happy to help you out with that uh, you can book time on my calendar by uh, going to the link in the description below uh, also in the description below is a link to request an invite to the Cortex users group, which is a virtual meeting that I run every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Um, it's basically an opportunity for anyone using Cortex, anyone thinking about using Cortex to ask any questions that they have of either me or other people who are using Cortex or thinking about using Cortex. Uh, it's basically an hour that I set aside to be available to the community. If you're interested in that, go ahead and check out the link in the description down below. And I hope to see you on uh, Tuesday. So I say that, and actually next Tuesday, there might not be one. Not sure yet. Uh, I might have a conflict, but uh, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll post a video one way or the other, or uh, a little blurb on the on the YouTube channel. So Tuesdays, most Tuesdays, 10 a.m. Pacific time is the Cortex users group. So with that, let's get into SAML. Um, Sharewell made this super easy uh, by comparison to uh, configuring other things. Um, ADFS also makes this super easy. So we're going to look at both the ADFS side which is more or less the same uh, as it was with with Sharewell, and the uh, the Cortex side, which is a little bit more involved. And uh, strangely enough, that actually means that the configuration on the ADFS server is a little bit more involved um, because Cortex doesn't do things quite as nicely as Sharewell did yet. I'm working on that, but at least for right now, there's a little bit of fiddly configuration. So let's get into it. Let's start with uh, the configuration file for uh, Cortex. Uh, so if you've set up Cortex already, you might be familiar with this. You might have seen this before. Um, I mentioned in previous videos, there are only two things you need to configure in Cortex. That's not entirely true anymore. Now there's a third thing, which is authentication. The first two things were your connection string and your Cortex license code. Um, but now we have a block of configuration called authentication. And we're gonna ignore most of these settings up at the top. Uh, those are actually for if you're doing uh, OpenID Connect uh, style authentication, which I'll do in a separate video. But for right now, we're only going to consider our concern ourselves with the SAML type of authentication. So you'll set type to SAML, and then you'll pay attention to this SAML block down here. There are four settings. Uh, there are actually a few more if, if you want to customize it further. Um, but for right now, uh, we're going to fill in these four settings. The first one is the metadata URL. And this is the same metadata URL that you would go to to download the metadata uh, to import into Sharewell. 
uh, for the IDP metadata. So I'm just going to copy that URL right here. And what Cortex will do is it'll go download that metadata and then extract the pieces that it needs. So this is exactly like configuring the IDP in Sharewell. So in Sharewell, you would download the, the IDP metadata, import it, and a bunch of fields will populate on that IDP screen. Same thing happening here. Now the public URI is the URL or the URI that you would go to to access Cortex. So in my case, I'm actually running this locally because I, I don't have a, a live production environment that's wired up to SAML. The, uh, the demo environment that link, that's linked down in the description below uh, is using Keycloak, it's using OpenID Connect, which again, separate video for that. But since I'm, I'm using my local dev environment, uh, we're going to use that URI, which is HTTPS. It should always be HTTPS, regardless of whether you're using a self-signed certificate or a, a legitimate certificate. Uh, localhost, and then I happen to be running on port 7135. It's just, it's just the port my dev environment is running. So that's what public URI is. This is basically when you go to Cortex in a browser, what is the URL that you type in or that you have your bookmark set to. Next up is the certificate file. And this is, this is actually not accurate. It shouldn't be signing certificate file. It should be just certificate file. Same thing with certificate password. It should just be certificate password, not signing certificate password. So certificate file um, is the certificate that you'll use for um, signing an encryption. Uh, so in Sharewell, this is the certificate that you would have uh, uploaded to the service provider settings side of the SAML configuration. Uh, so in my case, I happen to have a, uh, a PFX file, a certificate uh, that I've generated from a Windows machine. Um, it happens to be in my downloads folder. This is not the best path for it to be. I, I fully understand that. Um, and you definitely don't want to have the password in the name of the file. I just do this for development because if I didn't have it there, I would forget what I sent it to, what super, super secure password I, I used. Um, so that's the file. Um, this can be any path. Uh, it, I, in, if you're running an IIS, it just needs to have access to it. And then of course, we know what the password is, so that goes in certificate password. Uh, and this is the password that you set when you exported the certificate from, say, the certificate store on the, the server where you created it. Um, this is the password that's used to protect the, the private key. And that's really what Cortex needs, is, is the private key from, from that PFX. So the PFX is typically the certificate and the private key kind of bundled together. The important part is the private key, but it should be the certificate plus private key bundled together. You'll also need the certificate by itself. And in this case, it shouldn't have the private key. We're going to use that a little bit later. Um, if you if you have this PFX where they're bundled together, uh, there are several different commands that you can run uh, or, um, you know, you can just re-export it from, from the certificate manager. Um, just without the private key and just have the certificate. Um, so we'll use that in a second. And this is this is it. Um, just just these four pieces of configuration uh, to get everything set up on the Cortex side. Now, I actually I'm using self signed certificates, which means that validation uh, validation of them um, is a little bit uh, tenuous. So I, I actually have a few other settings that I need to uh, drop in. Uh, basically saying, don't validate the certificate. I'm fine, I, I trust it. Uh, don't check to see if it's revoked. Oh, and this last setting here, force authn. This is the same as the force authentication setting in Sharewell. 
Uh, so basically what this will do is when you click the log out button in Cortex, it'll redirect to the SAML IDP and force it to reprompt for login. Um, if you don't have this set, then logging out of Cortex will redirect you to the SAML uh, server. You're probably still logged in there, so SAML will say, yep, I know who you are, and send you right back to Cortex and have you logged in again. Um, so in most cases, you're probably going to want to set force authn to true, um, but it is an option in case that's, that's not what you want. All right, so with that in mind, we're gonna switch over to configure the IDP side. So here we have uh, a Windows server uh, running ADFS, and this is the, the ADFS uh, management, management console. Under relying party trust, we're gonna click add, add our relying party trust. And I apologize if this is a little small on the screen, you might need to zoom in to, to see what I'm clicking um, because I don't think I can uh, bump up the, the screen size, unfortunately. Um, so in the wizard, uh, you'll select claims aware, uh, because we actually do need, we're, we're not just getting a binary or do they exist? Do they not exist? We actually need to know information about who, who's logging in and then click start. Uh, with Sharewell, you would select import data about the relying party, uh, from a file, from a federation metadata file. Um, so you would select the second item. We're gonna select this third one, which is enter data about relying party manually. And this is the part that I I really would love to be able to give you an XML file and say, here you go. This is, just import it and you'll be good to go. Um, unfortunately, there are still bits and pieces that would need to be entered manually. So we're just gonna do everything manually. So we make sure to get it all right. So enter data about the relying party manually. Click next. For a display name, I'm just gonna say demo. Next screen asks you about a, an encryption certificate. And this is the certificate that I mentioned before. So here's that SAML signing password is password certificate and private key bundle that I was talking about before that I had on the, on the other machine. This is not what we want. This should actually be nowhere near the IDP for security purposes. You don't want the private key somewhere out, you know, potentially publicly insecurely. This server is secure, but you know, just keep your private key private. Uh, this is just the certificate side of that bundle. So this is the, the file that we're gonna use. So we'll, we'll browse, go to desktop, and apparently I picked a name for it that uh, it doesn't recognize, but it is a valid uh, certificate, so your security certificate. We'll grab that one, open, and you'll see it shows up some information. This The CN doesn't matter because we're not using this as an SSL certificate. Uh, it, it really just needs the, the public and private key components uh, to do the, the encryption and decryption properly. Next, uh, le you can leave everything on the screen blank. Next up is the relying party trust identifier. And this is probably the most important piece to get right um, because this is, this is what uh, matches against the URL of your Cortex in instance and, and make sure that the, the IDP knows what's trying to get access to, to authentication information. So in this case, we need to make sure that it's HTTPS local host and I'm gonna cheat and go back here and say, what is it? It's this guy, right? So we'll just copy that. And we'll actually just paste that there. Click add. Then next, permit everyone is totally fine. If you wanna lock it down uh, to specific groups or users, or you might be able to customize this access control policy, go right ahead. 
I'm going to say permit everyone. And then next. And the one thing that we want to add is on endpoints. We actually, we'll, we'll need to go in and modify this because there's, this is kind of a review screen. There's no way to customize this, which is really what we need to do. Next. I do want to configure claims issuance policy. Um, we'll see if that actually pops up after I click close. It didn't the last time I did this, so we'll see. Doesn't look like it's going to. So let's go in and edit the endpoints first. We're gonna add a SAML endpoint. It is SAML assertion consumer, not SAML logout. It is this first one. The binding is post. Yes, let's set it as default. And then it's our base URL slash SAML dash assertion. Uh, and this is the URL that the IDP is going to send the assertion back to. Uh, this needs to be configured, otherwise it doesn't know where to, where to send the authentication information to. Um, we'll say OK. Now that's all set up. Finally, we need to edit the claim issuance policy. Uh, and this is basically so that we get the, the user's name, uh, which is what Cortex needs to figure out who you are. So send LDAP attributes as claims. Yep, that's what we want. Claim rule name, we'll say name ID. The attribute store is not showing up for some reason. Let's see what happens. It is supposed to be Sam account name. And yeah, it's not going to let me because for some reason, the attribute store is not showing up. This should be uh, Active Directory. I'll actually show you one that I set up previously. So that one, edit claim issuance policy. Here's one that I set up previously. Attribute store is Active Directory. SAM account name, outgoing claim type is name ID. There are lots of different options on this list. It's very important that what you select is name ID. SAM account name is just a fancy way of saying the Windows account username. Uh, so since demo, uh, let's, let's see if we can get this working here. There we go. Okay, Active Directory, name ID. Sam account name and outgoing claim type is name ID. We'll click finish. Okay. So now we have our demo relying party trust set up, configured. That's it. We can actually verify that all this works. And hopefully the demo gods are on my side. Hey, look. The SAML server recognizes me. So I'm going to log in with CSD admin and let's see if I remember the password. And I do. And we're logged in. So 18 minutes later, we're finally logged in with SAML. It's all configured. Um, if I had other users set up with that SAML server, uh, or that AD domain, essentially, uh, I'd be able to log in with them as well. Uh, I could log in as Claire, I could log in as Emma, and Cortex would automatically detect based on, on that username. So, that was a lot. This is a long video. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, it's SAML. It's a, it's, a, it's a load of fun. It's a box of fun. If you have questions about how uh, to configure Cortex to use SAML or how SAML works, or uh, if you have a specific SAML configuration that you want to make sure is supported, uh, there's contact information for me down below. There's a link to schedule time with me. And of course, if you like this uh, video and what I'm doing, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button. 
I've noticed that most of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. So do me a favor, subscribe, do yourself a favor, subscribe, uh, because all of these videos really do build on top of each other. And the fact that you've watched one probably means that you'll be interested in whatever I'm talking about uh, next week. Um, that being said, thanks for watching, even if you aren't subscribed. And uh, I'll see you in the next one, which will probably be another one that has something to do with authentication. Later.